at one point or another, I think most hockey fans have played NHL GM mode. That's probably where it's yeah, at. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to – now, it's not like real life. Don't get me wrong, but having maybe a little bit of experience managing um, a team or a franchise or whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things I did literally just uh, last week or just this weekend, I did a live stream in NHL 21 – and I was trying to make the Buffalo Sabres be a competent team, which was a lot more difficult than I thought it was. Um, <laughs> because, like, you got Jack Eichel there. I found out that, like, uh, I, I didn't want to change the roster too much from the first year. And I thought, okay, I'll do two years. First year, I'll keep the roster pretty much intact. And second year, I'm going to blow the whole thing up just to see if I can do better than the year before. The first year, Jack Eichel somehow wins the Rocket Richard with 50 goals. I'm like, okay. I'll take it, but the rest of the roster sucked. So I was like, okay, great. That kind of sounds like the Buffalo Sabres I know. Um, and then the <laughs> second year, I like managed to trade away Jeff Skinner's contract, trade away Kyle Poso's contract. I had to like heavily give up like draft picks in return, but I managed to get it done. I was thought, okay, we're onto something here. I've got like $30 million of cap space here. I can make something work here. Like just sign all the free agents. Buffalo's done it so many years before and it's always worked out well for them, hasn't it? So then I, <laughs> I, you know, I just like, I, 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 I uh, signed all these guys. I got Binnington in there. I signed Dougie Hamilton for the back end. I'd, for some reason, Montreal had offered me Alexander Romanov in a deal. I can't remember who for. I think it's one of my players wanted to trade. And then I managed to get Romanov and a second round pick for it. So I was like, right, I'll take that. Take that, absolutely. Uh, Dylan Cousins was an absolute stud for me. And then um, I had this great team lined up. And then they like the injury bug hit. And I was like, okay, so if it's not the team's good, it's the fact that they can't stay healthy for more than five games straight. So I, I feel sorry for Buffalo fans, man. Like they have struggled mightily. <laughs> oh, that's the understatement of the season, I think. Um, yeah. And uh, I just, I just want to say, watch out, Kevin Adams. I think you got a mm. competition for a new GM. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if Kevin Adams is considered, you know, a temp or if he's, uh, if Sabres fans have confidence in him, like, uh, when he took over for Jason Bottrell, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sabres, like it's, it's strange. Like you think, I thought they were going to be a pretty good team this season. I didn't think they would, you know, they, they weren't a contender in, in my eyes, but I thought they were at least, you know, a playoff, uh, contender with uh, the addition of Taylor Hall and Eric Stahl. Um, but, uh, you yeah, know, and the Jeff Skinner fiasco, like that's still, I'm still really scratching my head about that. Like he's been a healthy scratch for the last few games. Like, and he's also been like the bottom six when he has played. So yeah, um, as you would say, Hayden, make from that what you will, folks. Yeah, quite quite literally. It's, it's very much like if we want to talk specifically about Jeff Skinner, for example, it's such a difficult situation for a coach to be put in. Like Ralph Kruger, he's had some interesting uh, backstory. And every single time he's mentioned on a national broadcast, they always uh, discuss his, you know, interesting backstory in becoming a coach in hockey. Like he was a member of a Premier League team, soccer team here in the UK a couple of years ago. Oh, I, I can't remember that. Which, which one exactly. Which... Uh, I can't okay. remember exactly. Oh, I want to say... Crystal Palace, but you'd have to fact check me on that. I'm not 100% wow. sure. Um, no, but yeah, he, he's got like a, he's had, I think he's worked in several different sports before coming to hockey, but his resume and the way that he um, works uh, obviously is quite appealing to the Buffalo Sabres, and that's why they hired him. And obviously, he worked with Team Europe during the World Cup of Hockey and got them to the finals of a team that wasn't expected to make it that far so he's he's built himself up a pretty decent pedigree within the sport but it's such a difficult conundrum uh when it comes to somebody like Jeff Skinner who clearly like if he wasn't earning nine million dollars he would not be on the roster he would not be talked about as being on the roster because he scored what one point this season two points this season one point in 15 games just one exactly. assist exactly yeah, one assist. So he hasn't even scored a goal this year. He's got one assist. He was he was a 40 goal scorer a couple of years ago mm -hmm. or 30 goal scorer, something like that. 40, 40. And 40, 40 goals. Yep. And he hasn't scored one in over a dozen games this year. If he was a player on a rookie contract, he'd be in the minors by now. If he was a player on a $1 million deal, he'd be on the taxi squad by now. You know, like, so I don't blame Ralph Kruger for wanting to scratch him. But at the same time, because he's earning $9 million a year, would you rather have $9 million a year on the ice or off the ice? It's, it's such a difficult situation to be in. And I, I I know fans might get annoyed about that or Buffalo fans specifically be like, well, I mean, he's making this much money. Let's put him on the ice. But at the end of the day, the coach's job is to 
put the best team on the ice that has the best possible chance to win hockey games, something Buffalo has clearly struggled with this year, like more so than the Rangers. And they're rebuilding. Like, come on, guys. Like every single year, they're towards the bottom of the standings. They've got to, they've got to figure something out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, Go ahead, Vince. Yeah, yeah just on, on Buffalo, the thing is, you know, multiple GMs and head coaches have been relieved of their duties it, they, but in my opinion, what's lacking with Buffalo Sabres for the last couple of years is the plan. There's no plan in place and that says this is the Buffalo Sabres. Like, there's no identity. And I think that's the major problem with the Buffalo Sabres. I, I, think, the, I think another big problem with the Buffalo Sabres is the fact that they just haven't drafted well. Because let, let, let's be honest, with the way Buffalo's played recently – they're not exactly a, a, a hotbed for free agents, are they? Like how many high tier free agents do we hear that go, you know what? I want to sign with the Buffalo Sabres. Taylor Hall, he's the only one recently, right? Taylor mm-hmm. Hall thought I'm going to the Buffalo Sabres, but let's be perfectly honest here, guys. Like, and I think you'll be able to agree with me here. Did Taylor Hall go to the team for the chance to go to the playoffs or the hefty paycheck he was being signed for that one year contract? Like, uh, the latter, which one is it? I would bank on. point. For sure, yeah. Yeah, um, like yeah. obviously, obviously, going and playing with Jack Eichel is something is like a winger's dream. It's basically like uh, him, uh, like Eichel, Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid. Those guys are going to bring marquee free agents in because it's like you're playing with some of the best centers in the world. Eichel's 24, I believe, so he's not even hit like the traditional prime years of his career. He's 24 years old and he's still lighting up the NHL. But like, and he's still, and I, I think what makes that more impressive is he's doing that with practically no supporting cast around him, which is even more impressive. And, and then given the fact that, you know, like Taylor Hall, yeah, he is a marquee free agent that signed with them. But let's be honest, if the team wasn't doing well, he signed that deal in the, in the hopes that if the team did well, he'd go to the playoffs, get the chance to play there. If not, he could be traded by the deadline. Like he doesn't care. He wants to go to a contender at the end of the day. And he didn't have necessarily the best season in Arizona uh, last year what was it Arizona that you played last year it's been yeah, so yeah, long he, since the yeah he was season. start off with the Devils and then they shipped yeah him off to yeah it was split between the, the Devils and the uh, Coyotes and obviously mm-hmm. he didn't have a, as good of a season as he would have liked or the Coyotes would have liked so it's kind of okay he, he goes to Buffalo in the hopes of having a resurgent season alongside Jack Eichel then next year when hopefully things go back to normality a little bit and the, maybe the salary cap rises a little bit because it didn't this year yeah. maybe he can then cash in on his big payday of his career yeah so, maybe, maybe COVID is uh, I mean I, I'm not going to bank on COVID being over um come next season but hopefully it's things are easier at, at least if anything the, the, yeah. the good thing is arenas are now getting fans in the stands now like uh, uh Pittsburgh just announced 15 percent capacity uh, the Rangers are running at 10% capacity. Dallas and Florida have had people in there since the beginning. Now, politics aside, that's whether you agree or not with uh, the rules that are put in place by each different state. The one thing that I think we can all agree on is that it's good to have, it's nice to have fans in the, re- the arenas again and actually hear actual chants and actual fans responding to what's happening on the ice as opposed to the pre recorded stuff that they've been using since the, the return to play program. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I just want to say um, that's not to say that there won't be an outbreak and then. Yeah, exactly. Be... So, yeah, I, I, I'm I, like, I agree for sure, but I'm also thinking I don't blame any arena for deciding to play it safe. Oh, of course not. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's people's uh, health you've got to put first, right? And obviously, mm-hmm. it, it, it sucks that we've been in this situation for the last year or so now. Like, People have been stuck at home. People might have lost their jobs, which is a, a horrible situation to be in. Like, I'm very fortunate that the work that I do, I've managed to be able to keep doing it with little to no disruption because it's kind of all online anyway. So I'm very fortunate in that position. But I know that there are hundreds of thousands of people who, you know, they have to go to work every day and that's how they earn their paycheck and that's how they feed their family. So uh, if it's the arenas or whether it be like fans themselves that decide, you know what, I want to play this a little bit safe because I need to keep myself healthy because I need to, at the end of the day, go and earn money for my family. Like, it's important. And I, and I think it's, I, I, it would be great if we could have a situation where people weren't chastised for the choices they do or don't make in that scenario. But We all know what Twitter's like, so...